biggest and most successful real estate entrepreneurs, investors, and capital raisers in the world to provide you with the tool sets, the mindsets, and the skill sets to help you conquer yourself, your life, your marriage, and use real estate as your wealth creation vehicle so that you can live a more successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and contribution. If what you're after is having it all, if what you desire is becoming the best version you can be across all areas, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, sentimentally, and financially, you've come to the right place. We will bring to you the best of the best real estate entrepreneurs who will give you the insights, knowledge, experience, and skills so that you can go out and crush it financially and across all areas of your life. Grab pencil and paper, sit back, enjoy, and you are welcome to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. Today, I have an incredible queen with me, and I'm super excited to get to talk to her, uh, connect with her, and learn from her today in this interview. But before I introduce her to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you uh, watching on YouTube, on TikTok, watching the reels and the clips. I actually just want, got one reel that got like 20,000 20, views, so I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm excited to spread our message. And I just want to ask all of you for a favor today. I want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview, if you get some type of value and insight, if you learn a new skill, if you get some inspiration, maybe some motivation to go out and take some action and keep on moving forward towards your goals, please share this episode. Share it with some friends. Share it on your Facebook, on your stories, on your Instagram. Share it and help us more people. Today I have Holly Williams. She's principal of Keep More. Uh, it's a it's a multifamily real estate investing company. And uh, Holly has been a real estate investor for 20 years. Her active, real estate, her active real estate portfolio includes rental apartments in Brooklyn, New York, single-family homes in New Orleans, L.A., um, and in upstate New York, and uh, passive investments in Texas also. So she uh, keepsmore.com works with the best indications in the business to bring passive real estate investment opportunities to accredited and sophisticated investors. To, to date, keepsmore.com has uh, co-syndicated over 20 multi family apartment communities encompassing over 4,500 units with a combined valuation of $400 million. So uh, super excited, very experienced real estate investor. Super excited to have you, Holly. Thank you very much for making some time and you're welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thank you. So the first thing that I do with my guests, Holly, is I actually ask them to walk us through their real estate investing journey in 75 seconds or less. Joe Fairless needed a, an investor. I knew him from whenever I invested in his deal. Um, I was amazed at what happened and that, that you could invest in real estate passively. And so then I began working with him to find other deals. And one thing has led to another. And that was in 2013 or 14. It all started um, after my watch my parents die with at pretty much no money and realized that how screwed up our financial system is. Was that 75 seconds or less? Yeah, it was way less. And it was, it was, it was really good. So <laughs> you started as a, it was like really, it definitely hooked some people. So I'm excited. Well, so not really. I had a four family house in Brooklyn. Um, I had, you know, a couple of single family. I had done the single family home thing a couple of times, but it was just so much work. And so I hadn't been real estate investing that much I, I, because I had a full-time job. I was a hotshot in advertising, advertising research, mostly com score, those sorts of things. So that's how I met and got to know Joe Fairless because I'm from Texas and we're both on the same board, Texas Tech. So guns up. Yeah. Any tech so fans watching. I'm, I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing his name just because I'm Mexican, but you met this guy. Yeah, I met this guy that I, that's a friend of mine and, uh, and it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, and I invested in a passive multifamily deal and I was an accredited investor for years. I didn't know what that was. I thought I was the only person that didn't know that you could passively invest in real estate. And I started calling my friends that were richer than me and they didn't know either. And that's when I, the light bulb went off like, oh my goodness. And then did some more research and basically it, the wealthy people that are born wealthy, 
that have 40 million, 50 million, 150 million dollar net worths and able to get into Goldman Sachs's wealth management pro thing or whatever, or invest in a hedge fund or whatever. They have access to investment opportunities that that regular you know. <laughs> and you yeah. can't know, right? Okay. And so that so, led me on this whole journey of of passive investing and of learning how the wealthy manage their money. Mm. And I started putting those things into action and it's been a uh, quite tra life transforming. Are you a full-time real estate investor? Yes. I yeah. left my job, my job job uh, in 2018. So I, uh, I'm a general partner in, in deals. I invest in deals, but mostly I'm a, I like to go in as a, as a key principal or, or, or whatever and help, People kind of get going in this in this amazing journey of of uh, of multifamily real estate. Um, I haven't done. I'm, do, I'm doing my first deal this year, though. I think that you know I I I can't afford to lose money, so capital preservation is my my yeah for sure for sure for sure, and so. I think you've got to have a lot of wiggle room. And I think that that buyers and sellers are starting to sellers are starting to see that it wasn't the market that it that it has been, right? And so mm -hmm. they're becoming in line. But but things were we got into some crazy times there with bidding wars and that sort of thing. And I don't I'm not getting into that. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Right. So um right. You, you you left your job in 2018. So mm -hmm. what made what made you leave your job? Were, were you able to like replace your yeah. income with your passive yes yeah? yes okay. i i was and and then i became i wanted to become more active i became very i'm very passionate about helping people right and and to really understand because all we hear about is bernie madoff mm -hmm. and private investing but you see i've learned so much over the last 10 or 15 years about how money really works and about how Wall Street runs the show, right? Yeah. And and you know people don't know. I didn't know that that the stock market's a secondary market. By the time the really really wealthy, by the time we we get a chance to go on E Trade and buy our stock, right? It, mm -hmm. The rich people are already out. Yeah, They're for sure. They made their money, you know. And and so there's a lot of those things that that I just didn't. I didn't know. And then I, I found out that very few other people know, relatively speaking, know either. And that just blew my mind. And then those that know, don't think it's any, they don't know any different because they, they grew up in families that, 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 that knew about passive real estate syndications and they know about investing in oil and gas and they know about, uh, the car wash business and how, what a great, bag. they know yeah. all these things. But what I learned was to go to, go to school, get a job, put the most in the 401k, move up the corporate ladder. Don't quit a job. If you don't have another job, um, uh, you know, all, all, all of the stuff. And I, and, and, and that's what I learned. And so what happened was I what a ripoff, right? Right, right. And that's what I learned. And that's what most people that I in my circle of, you know, in the advert that I worked with for 30 years in the advertising business, that's what they know too. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I'm I'm uh, making dramatic sweeping. But it's not that dramatic. I mean, people all we people think this is too good to be true. I had to take my husband to three CPAs before he he was like, Holly, we're going to jail. You can't you can't like invest fifty thousand dollars in a real in a passive thing and then have you and get money all year and then lose money and then have that loss loss offset the gains that we're making on the Brooklyn so I didn't know that either yeah that that that's that's that sounds really fun right 
to like well, know and well, then... yeah but you start talking like this and people think that you're uh, people that don't that grew up like me people they think that there's no way that you could do this mm -hmm. and that's what our tax code says we can do yeah We're for sure and then if you the learn laws. to do it I mean, you don't want to mess with the taxes you don't you want to I, I, listen i've got accountants and lawyer you don't want to mess with the irs nobody's trying to you know people say you're taking advantage of loopholes well the loopholes are there to incentivize commerce for sure mm -hmm. you know so we're so i mean that's the way the law the tax code is written and and that's it's this thick but it's not this thick because uh you know two inches thick because uh to help you pay tell you how much tax you owe it's it's there to tell you um it's a game what right? to do what the government wants you to do to incentivize jobs to incentivize growth economic growth to to help other people find uh, housing or whatever and 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 i don't i know i didn't i never thought this way and so the more i got into this the more i really i began to think very very differently about about things and mm -hmm. that the really wealthy think very very differently and it's very interesting right because we're, we're in a well thought out well designed system that you can either choose to unconsciously be a victim of or choose to play and play it well and make a lot of money and build an awesome life for yourself you know and i know people that have done the corporate thing i mean i, I had an awesome life i was never i didn't I did. I invested in my first deal to help my friend out. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, he was just starting this. He quit his. And job. then you started. You started receiving checks on the mail every single month. Well, yeah, <laughs> and and I was like, wait a minute. I didn't even have to call a plumber one single time. So I didn't understand the difference between equity investing mm -hmm. and debt investing. They call stocks equities. They're not equities. What you're doing is is you're investing in a company so that they have capital to go expand. And as they expand, you supposedly make money. But nobody it goes up and down and they're trading in nanoseconds and they're telling us to hold and be patient and invest for the long haul, but they're they're not doing that. <laughs> you know, they're buying and selling in milliseconds. So yeah. so so there are a lot of things that I um a big awakening and it's not that the stock market's bad it's just that that's what we're all taught and i'm in it but i'm not certainly my 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 casino money is in the stock market my safe money is in For sure. private assets it, mm -hmm. it's in assets that that you can so, see <clears throat> to and touch. So how you, what do you mean by you're going to do the, your first deal this this year like what, what deal means, is it yeah so in 2019 i probably did six or seven mm -hmm. syndications as okay. a general partner. Um, this is my first one. We've, we're doing a, a, a project in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's, it's an apartment complex right next to, you know, uh, uh, the, the Louisville medical center and all of that. So it's the first prod first thing I've done as a general partner this year, just okay. because, okay. Yeah, it's just because, you know, and we're getting it 20% less than we could have la a year ago. So there you go. Nice. All right. They came back to us and said, hey, okay, because we weren't going to get the bidding wars were happening then. Now they're not. So it's a good time to take advantage of some things if you can, if, if, if you can underwrite it where it works at high interest rates and it's already and cash flowing. So, so right now you you help professionals just like you were once, right? You were a professional yes. making, uh, you uh, you were accredited. You didn't know about this. You met a guy who who you know got you into passive real estate investing. All of a sudden, you can replace your income, your like working income, with passive, with uh, with your passive investments, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start helping other professionals replace their current income with passive cash flow, right? So now, so this is what you're doing. One of the ways that you do that is with like with the current deal that you have. Like, that, that's one of the well, ways that you. I learned how to go find deals, and I learned how it all works, and I learned how to 
you know, it's not even about raising money. What it's about is executing a business plan, right? And that I understand from the corporate world. It's mm. all about executing a business plan and managing the management company and being being really, you know, on top of, of things because it's the little things. See, because if you're up in New York with a spreadsheet working for a hedge fund and you're your own, you own, which is, you know, if you go to any garden style apartment in America, most of the time they'll tell you and you ask who owns this place that most of the time they'll give you the name of the management company, but who yeah. owns most of these are hedge funds and REITs. People think that I do REITs. I don't do it. REIT is a mutual fund that owns. It's, it's not the equity. What we're doing is what a, what a syndication is, is that it's a, it's a lot of people that get together and they buy together an apartment complex. And that's, that's really what's going on. And, and the general partners do all the heavy lifting and work, work. And it makes sense. And the wealthy have known about it forever. This is stuff that they do. Right. But I never knew you could do this. Mm -hmm. So how do you educate people? You know, how do you educate those professionals that you help um, receive passive cash flow every single month, like change their mindset? How do you help them take a look at what you got going on from a different perspective in which they actually believe it's possible and they don't think they're going to go to jail. So that's, that's why I wrote hidden investing, the book that I wrote. So I wrote a book a couple of years ago called hidden investing with the wealthiest 1% know that we don't. And basically I go through 10 myths of money that mm -hmm. most of us are common. And I'll just speak for myself, right? They just, the, the what I thought I wrote down that things that I thought, I knew about how money works and, and the thing of the 401k, like I, I didn't realize, you know, we hear like the 401k, right? We hear that it's tax free. It's mm. anything but yeah. tax free. You see, cause when you take that out, you're, you're charged full income, not even the capital gains rate. I mean, so, so my parents, you know, and at the same time, it's going up and down and up and down. So if you're, if you're 65 years old, you don't have, you know, in 2008, things crashed and it took 15 years to totally come back. Well, you don't have that kind of time. You, they yeah. make you take the money out too. So when you go to any financial advisor, go to any of these calculators online, do any of that. The very first th question is how long do you expect to be retired? The whole, the whole program that we're, that we're taught is it's designed fun. for us to die broke. It's not designed yeah. for us to build generational wealth. And so the wealthy I mean, they use life insurance a whole different way than we do. I always thought it was a scam. Now I have a life insurance license because I'm so passionate about it. And because banks are the largest purchaser of life insurance in the country, but you have mm. to use it right. You have to use it to store wealth. But I didn't. Yeah. Know, I didn't know it's a it's a particular way of 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 doing things and and. So things, all of the, this has been a journey that has taken place probably since 2011, since my parents passed away. And I realized, you know, so I wrote this book about these 10 myths because you, what I've found that is until you believe that I'm right here <laughs> with these myths, until you see it and know it and, oh my God, she's right then you're ready with the mindset because mm. because that's to me it was the yeah because you could read them and not believe a thing right Correct. like just just you know like an example right now i just um came across a bodybuilder like uh -huh. this is completely off topic Love, but I came across no a it's not bodybuilder bodybuilder is, from is... like the 80s right sure and this guy says like i go to the gym like five times per week and i spend like an hour and i go really hard and i do like 20 sets and just i work really hard right sure and then i came across this bodybuilder that says that you should go to the gym once every five days and then every five to seven days and then that you should only do one um one set per exercise and no more than two exercises per muscle so that means two sets 
right total for, per muscle right, right, that's right. crazy like i do like five and i do like five exercises um and then and then it's like i i just can't believe it right Right. But I'm not gonna know whether it works or not, whether it works or not, until like I actually try it. And there's like, and then this guy uses like science and he backs everything that he says by with with studies and everything. But my mind cannot can just just broke like I cannot take it. I cannot I can I just can't believe that we, that, that that's actually work. And then I, and the other thing is that I'm actually going to go crazy. Like what I'm gonna do? Like I'm, I I shouldn't go to the gym every five days. What I'm gonna do then? Well, I can right? find so, all kinds of things to do. <laughs> but I'm true. Gonna... Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. right? uh, but I'm gonna try it. And but the only reason, like the the most the, the the thing that is keeping me from trying it is just my belief system, and the fact that I don't know anything else other than working really hard and going to the gym every single day and doing a lot of work. Mindset is everything, and and when you you were telling that, I, I was thinking quality over quantity. Yeah, for sure. You, know, mm-hmm. you could do things right, or you can just stumble along and try to do it, just lift away. By <laughs> force. Know, I, mm-hmm. There's got to be a a way to qualitatively look at that Mm -hmm. and uh and yeah you're and like what you said right this is about um executing a business plan most people don't make business plans they think it's you know a waste of time i actually used to think that it was a waste of time i used to think that i I was just like go 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 it was really rare for me to take some time to like really plan and look at the numbers and everything but um doing that and then i and then executing on on that plan is actually you know what? What's brought me results a lot faster. Yeah, right? but it I feels slow. I would rather slow. do one great deal than, you know. Of course, in 2019, there were, it wasn't hard to find great deals. Mm-hmm. But I'd certainly rather. I see a lot of not great deals, and it's frightening actually. But, but, uh, you know, it's it's it's. I think that that this has been a gradual awakening. Yeah, and and now I have eleven myths because I'm just learning about Medicare and what a scam that is. So, so we're, you know, it's it it you never stop learning about. It's crazy. It's it's just we're taught this stuff, and then we hear about Bernie Madoff and how all this stuff and the 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 there's a couple of fraudsters that have been doing syndications that have, it's just really unfortunate. And, you know, you don't, you don't hear about the the ones that'll crawl over broke a glass to make sure that their investors are taken care of. Right. Yeah. So, so for all of you listening, if you want to make sure to not die broke and you want to learn about the, the, you want to learn what the top 1% of wealthy investors do and uh, the 10 mistakes that you should avoid right and change your mindset and all of that so that you don't die broke um go to hiddeninvesting.com slash get report right so in there you'll find um i think a pdf format of of uh holly's book and you'll be able to download it for free you can do um slash uh book something like that uh if if your folks want to buy the book you just pay for shipping and handling you can do that enter the code keep more at the box and we can put that down on your notes or whatever, but, but yeah. And I, and, and I tell everybody, I urge everybody, if anybody sees anything in there that, cause I'm not a professional finance person. Don't yeah, believe sure. a thing that I'm <laughs> saying. Don't believe a thing that I'm saying, but let me know if you find anything in there that's, that's, that's not accurate or that I'm, mm-hmm. that I'm you know, not right. And nobody's come Nobody's said anything in two years, so, and I know people are reading it, so. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then for anybody out there who wants to dive a little bit deeper into all of this stuff and and learn from your journey and learn from, um, and get rid of all of like those like limiting beliefs or false data that we've been fed, right? Um, I think you also have the hidden investing show, right? Yes, I just started a a podcast. And I swore I would never do a podcast, but um, I am doing it because I want to reach more people. I mean, that's really yeah. what it's a, what it's all about. Because people need to hear this because we're just we're even. And it's not that people are lying to us. It's not like the financial advisor is lying. He, they believe this too because this is what I went to business school and I didn't learn any of this. I learned about the stock market. Well. So did they, 
Yeah. And and nothing, everything else is scary. And you see the SEC and they're like, this accredited investor is to protect, you know, investors because, but yet you could go buy a stock and lose all of it. And you don't have to be an accredited investor. It's, it's designed to protect. Hello, modern kings and queens. I'm sorry for the interruption. I know you're enjoying the episode, but I have something super important that you must listen to. If you've been following this podcast for a while now, it's because of one of two reasons. Number one, you aspire to have it all, to unlock your potential across all areas of your life and achieve true freedom physically, emotionally, spiritually, sentimentally, and of course, financially. And or number two, you're a real estate investor or an aspiring real estate investor who has chosen to use real estate as your wealth creation vehicle to achieve financial freedom. My mission as part of the Modern Kings and Queens movement is to help as many people as I can achieve financial freedom using the vehicle of real estate. And I believe that networking can be an incredibly powerful tool to help you unlock your potential across all areas, but more importantly, financially, and more specifically in real estate. I believe that in real estate, your net worth is your network. This is why I created the four step capital racing networking system to help real estate investors propel their growth by using a reliable system that will consistently help them connect with their ideal investors, build trust, add value, get their investors to promote them and put them in front of more investors and raise more capital faster and in a much more effortless way so that they can become successful, not only financially, but across all areas of their life. If this is something that you want, and this is something that you're interested in, Click the link below to gain access to a training that will explain the four steps to building a high leverage network that you can use to raise millions of dollars in capital, propel your growth in real estate, and achieve financial freedom in a much more effortless way so that you can have more time and energy to pour into every single other area of your life so that you can become successful, not only financially, but across all areas of your life. In this training, you will learn four things. Number one, aligned connections. I'll show you how to network effectively and how to make sure that your networking efforts work by leveraging a secret little known concept called the cloak track. Number two, networking tool. I'm gonna reveal to you a secret networking tool that the top 5% of successful real estate investors use to become successful. And I'm gonna show you how you can use it too to become successful and get out of that 95% of real estate investors that don't really make it. Three, high status communication. In order for someone to invest in you, they have to feel like they know you, like you, and trust you. A lot of people can communicate, but very few can connect. High status communication will allow you to build trust and add value in a way that will make people feel like they know you, like you, and trust you for years in a time span of 30 minutes. And lastly, the fourth thing is the attention multiplication machine. The world doesn't run on all you anymore. It runs on attention. And this last thing, the attention multiplication machine, will show you how to get wealthy investors to promote you and put you in front of more wealthy investors so that you can raise more capital faster in a much more effortless way. So if this is something that interests you, click the link below to go watch the training. Make sure you stay all the way to the end. If you you find value and you want to book a call to talk about how you can get this completely offhand system, completely done for you system, implement it for you in the next five days. So click the link below. I'll see you on the other side. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of your episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. It is what it is. I mean, they, they don't like money flowing out of, of that. And Wall Street's not bad, but that's, from where I'm sitting, that's what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. So, so um, Holly, <clears throat> Let's get started on the real estate investor obstacle deep dive. It's a it's a new section, okay. you know, of our right. podcast. And Let's the aim it. of it is to discuss the most common obstacles that real estate investors, you know, have to face every single day. It's like like deal finding, deal analyzing, deal underwriting, um, operating, raising capital, team mm-hmm. building, and all of those things. Right. And my aim is just to deep dive into those common obstacles real estate investors will face yep. um, to provide them with the insights that will help them navigate through them a lot better. Love it. All right. So today I want to focus on the capital raising side. I found really interesting that you said that it's not so much about capital raising, but about uh, following a plan. So I want to see what, what your perspective on capital raising is. So um, Holly, 
in your experience as a real estate inv- as a multifamily apartment <laughs> complex real estate investor, um, how important do you think capital raising is? Well, you need money to do this. That's for sure. And but you don't wait till you have the deal to get the money, right? So it's all about relationships and it's about uh, trust. And it's I have a a a, a thing on my site about uh, about the things I look for when I'm evaluating a, a syndicator and. And I mean, I really like, I insist, even though I don't have to, I, I want to get to know all my investors, every, anybody that works with me on a deal, we're, we're, we're partners right? Yeah. because I invest in alongside of them. So, so they need to be in the right mindset as well, that this isn't, this, this, this isn't a mutual, this is not a money market fund, right? This is not a mutual fund. This is not you know, dividend stocks. This isn't, this isn't that it's, it's uh you know, you're really buying an apartment complex. So, so I think that, that when I, when I find a deal and, and get partners together to do it, I think that, that they, they, uh, they're the, the right mindset. Yeah. Right. It's okay. the same. They understand what they're investing in and they understand they know me and they and they and it's a big responsibility uh, that I do not take lightly. So so when you say that um, you don't have to wait till you find a good deal to work on raising capital and that you have to be working on raising capital by building relationships. Mm-hmm. Can you give me like a like a story uh, or, or or yeah, like or an anecdote that really ties that lesson together? Just for the, sure. For the so listeners. when I when I started calling all my friends, all my colleagues, former colleagues from advertising and 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 so forth, they were they didn't get what I was even saying, mm. and and so the more though that I started doing things like this and talking about my experience with people that I know and love, they started to begin to understand. And, and try it. And then they started to see the same things I'm seeing. Right. So, so it's that kind of, I, you know, I'm pretty animated and I'm pretty passionate about, about what I'm doing and that I couldn't really stop talking about it. Right. I mean, that's the first thing. And so yeah. people saw what, saw, saw what I was doing and, and, and that's kind of how I operate is I just talk about what happened to me and what I, what I do. Cause listen, don't, Again, don't believe a word. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. I don't have, not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax person. I'm I'm not any of those things and not giving any kind of financial advice whatsoever. I'm just telling everybody kind of what, what I did and what happened. Hmm. Yeah. So so, so um, when first starting in, in real estate investing, like, mm-hmm. like when you wanted to get on the other side and get more active, right? And you were going to start, uh, maybe you're working on your own deals. Was capital raising something you worked on tackling right away or or how did it come up in yeah. your journey? Well, you know, you're just always, always doing that. All people let me, are like, let me know when your next deal's coming and I don't have a deal yet. You got to let people know what you're doing. Like, listen, and, and explain what a, what a syndication is and what, you know, explain what it is, right? And so that they already know by the time you get a deal and there there's an opportunity to invest in it, they already know a lot about what you're doing. And mm, what so education is, is important, right? Very that's why you have like your book, your podcast. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you put content out, but all of that, right? Because you want to make sure that people are educated about what you're doing. So by the time you tell them what they're doing, they're like, oh yeah, I know. And then you had a, you have, you've already formed a relationship with them, and it's easier to get them to Correct. want to invest. Because if you wait till you have a deal to start getting money, it's very difficult. I thought it would be no problem, and I it's so funny because like everybody I talk to thinks, oh well, I know all these wealthy people. That doesn't matter because if they don't understand what what this is about and what what we're doing, and and they don't get it because it's not. They haven't made that mind shift yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so 
it's so good that sometimes you don't believe it. it's even true, right? So you thought it wouldn't be hard, like raising capital would be hard. So that was like your um I mean, I call some really notion. wealthy people, like my old bosses and stuff that used to, I was a relatively early employee at AOL. And they were like, Holly, you know, I lost money in a land deal a couple of years ago. I mean, do you want a job? Do you want I mean, all kinds of things? But I, I don't know. I, I understand the stock. It's just like, are you kidding me? Like, I know nothing I, except for I have an iPhone and it works, right? Yeah. I know nothing about Apple's margins. I know nothing about what the China trade agreement impacts. I know nothing about what they're what they're up to. I could tell. And so, you know, they they have this big conference. They, they introduce a product or whatever, and their stock goes down. It's like, it makes no sense, right? And... And I could tell you that 100% of the time, you know, we buy an apartment complex, we pay the expenses, we collect the rent, and whatever's left over, we share in the profits. So 100% of the time when we make money, then we make money. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so, you know, we can talk all day long about the ins and outs of it, but that's basically the premise, right? And so I can tell you all these things right, that I'm putting my money in. I mean, I can tell you what we're doing, the the risks in the, the market. I can tell you about the market. I can tell you what happened in the market in 2008. I can tell you how old the thing is, how much it's sold. I can tell you all this. I can't tell you anything about Apple stock and neither can your financial advisor, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, completely I, I mean, true. it's like I have an iPhone that works. You know, seriously, that's, that's really, and what we do is we take our entire life savings and our retirement planning and everything and give it to a financial advisor that has no idea whether it's going to go up or down or why it can't even control any of it. It doesn't even know why it's doing that. Right. And it's not because they don't know if they don't, they're bad people. It's just, that that's what they were trained to do when mm -hmm. they, when they went to get their MBA and then they went into the training program at fidelity or whatever, that's what they taught them. Right. They yeah. Teach them about, hey, you should go look at private real estate syndications. <laughs> so even know. like a wealthy person who, you know, had a had some financial success, didn't know about this kind of investments. Not not if you're not if you didn't grow up that way. That's what I found. I have found. I mean, if you because you see the really wealthy uh, protect their generational wealth. And then also most apartments are owned by hedge funds. Well, you can't invest in a hedge. Like one person can't just go invest in a hedge fund. I mean, yeah. most of them, right? They're family offices that have gazillions. They're, they're, I mean, that's who they're, they're wealth. They're uber wealthy, you know, 40 million and up, but with 10 million in investable assets, right? Is kind of the, 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 everybody thinks that, oh, JP Morgan private client, they have a whole other group for wealth. It's so management huge, right? For, like this, this, for really, this... really, really rich people that are, have access to all kinds of things that we don't. Mm -hmm. So Warren Buffett isn't going to his e trade account and buying stock, but, right? No, no, definitely not. So, um, Holly, when it comes to raising capital, right, like there's some, um, well, a lot of real estate investors out there who are struggling with that, right? And they they have all of these preconceived notions about it. They have fear. They, It's something that makes them insecure. So in your experience, what do you think is, would be the biggest specific obstacle to raise capital? And then, and then how, how have you been able to solve it? Well, so I think the, the, the myths about, about what we're taught and what we grow up learning is that's why I wrote the book. Right? So, the, so the, the, the limiting beliefs of people who don't know about syndications, who don't know about investing in, in funds, who don't know about this, those are, that's like the biggest obstacle. Well, yeah, cause you gotta make sure that they understand about the 401k and how it's taxed as regular income and how, when you're young and you're not, you're in a low tax bracket, you put the money in. And then when you're older, 
you take the money out when you're in a higher tax bracket. And they tell you that you don't need as much money when you retire. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, you want to take the grandkids to Disney World. You have all this time that you don't, you know, I don't want to downsize to a little apartment yeah, and never go yeah, anywhere. Sure. Just right? So, mm -hmm. and the tax rates never go down. So you're going to pay more in taxes than, you know, when, by the time you save all your life with this 401k and then you start withdrawing it to live on and you find out you get killed with taxes. That's what happened to my parents. And then it goes up and down and up and down. And if you're in a slump, it doesn't matter how, like right now, right now is a prime example. The, the bond market is supposed to, um, you know, the bond market, I guess I'll, I'll operate a few months ago. It's getting better now, but the bond market crashed in the last year. I mean, so bonds were supposed to be the safe things, mm -hmm. right? Well, so if you see when, once you sell, once you withdraw the money, once you sell, you have to sell the asset and then you'll never make it back because it's gone. So the government makes you take the money out whether the stock market is up or down. Well, at some point it's going to be down and you're going to have to take the money out and then you'll never make it back because you just had to sell it. So not only did you have to sell it, you had to take out more percentage wise of your nest egg to make the same amount of money. Then you have to pay full boat regular income taxes on it. Now there's a thing called the Roth IRA that is, if you're going to do an IRA, that's a good, if you, if you can, the, the, the challenge with that is that, is that a lot of people can't because they make too much money, the income mm -hmm. level, the, you know, well, there's a lot of rules and stuff. I don't, I don't really, I'm not up to speed on all of it, but, but that'll be never, but then, you know, that's what they said about, so then, then they passed, they started taxing social security. So you never know what laws are going to be what they're going to do next. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so it's those, those kinds of things that I really saw in action. It was heartbreaking with my parents. I mean, my, my mother died first and my dad, when I went through his stuff after he died, he was, he was doing math to see how long he could stay in his house before he was, you know, it was just really heartbreaking and he retired, yeah. with, you know, he did everything you're supposed to do. And they got screwed in 2008. And if I had all my money in the stock market now, I'd be I'd be terrified too because I'm, you know, I'm I'm getting up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it does sound heart heartbreaking, right? It is. I can't imagine. And I remember. So you he, Yeah, he took the lump sum because they wanted to leave my brother and I something, you know. And it's it's so interesting because my brother, I have a brother, and he, I was doing this for. Oh, six, seven, eight years before he finally said, okay, now what are you doing? See, this is my brother. Mm. <laughs> right? yeah. And he invested in one and now he's like, oh my God. And so, so he does uh, two a year, tries to do two investments a year to offset each other. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. there's a whole thing, but I said, you know, that's my only real regret is that I didn't know this about this when my parents were still alive. And he said they wouldn't have invested. They wouldn't have done it. Because mm -hmm. it's just so. Because of their mindset, right? Yeah. Correct. It's so ingrained. And if you don't change, change that mindset, you, you know, now people will take a chance if they know you and all that. But if you're not going to raise real money until, until people really understand yeah what what okay. the what what your what this is and what it's not so holly we have a couple of minutes and i do have um some questions that i end my interviews with yeah so the first one is actually um if you could go back in time right, to give yourself some advice what advice would you give yourself pertaining the the topic of real estate right what advice would you give yourself to be to have maybe a smoother journey or have bigger success or whatever in real estate I think buy for cash flow and and get out of the I'm going to buy low and sell high mentality. Okay. Because the people especially on the coasts, it you really the reason I 
work in Texas and the Carolinas and is is because you can't find things up here that are cash flowing. I'm sitting in New York. I'm sitting in Woodstock, New York at our house upstate actually. And, and um, you know, you can't find things that cash flow. Why it's, not? Well, because everything's so expensive and mm -hmm. you have to, and the appreciation is, is large. I mean, I've made money in New York real estate. There's no question, but, but the the idea of it cash flowing from day one, if you have to get a mortgage, it, it, the numbers just have never worked out. Never, never worked out. I've never been able to do it uh, with all the taxes and all the rules and regulations and all that. That just adds to the to the burden. But but down in uh, down in places like Louisville, Kentucky, where the mm -hmm. rents are growing, there is cash flow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. From day so then one, you would you would focus on investing in those kinds of assets that would cash flow from cash day one. flow from day one. That's correct. Now you can go invest. I just don't do it. You could go invest in ground up construction where where somebody's buys takes a, a longer time. lot of land and they're going to build a you know a community there, and you can make more money. I'm sure you can also lose. Yeah, and it takes more time, right? Developing. Yes, um, it does. And so that's and, not really for cash flow. It's for like long term gains, right? Exactly. And so people have that mentality about real estate. So I'm going to buy low and sell high. And I'm going to buy when it is low and make money when I sell it. And they even tell you that. They tell you we're trained, right? Oh, you got to go to a bigger house and you got to do. That. I mean, it's just, it's just. It's yeah. just crazy. Um, so my, my, my whole attitude about that is all changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it, it would be focus on investing in cash flowing assets okay, yeah, and assets and that cash flow from day one. I want to go to Florida because it's cold up here mm -hmm. and I'm tired of paying taxes. And my daughter graduated from high school. So she just finished her freshman year in college. And so there's no reason for us to be in New York. Right? I'm going to go rent in Florida, I think, because the uncertainty of the market and the fact that it's gone up like crazy the last several years, it might continue. It might not. Uh, but you know, there's a school of thought that says uh, rent where you want to live and invest where it makes sense to invest. Nice. Yeah. And, not and then the in, in Florida, yeah. like all and, the like, real estate entrepreneurs are there. Real estate is crazy. Events go on everywhere and, and it's pretty cool. It's like uh, Florida is a pretty cool place to live if you're in real estate. Without a doubt. And it's a good place. I mean, I've invested there too, but and it's sunny. I think, I think for me right now, a single family like to go live, I uh -huh. don't think that I want to buy a single family home right now to live to be my primary residence in Florida just because that's me. I don't know yeah. if I'm right. I don't know if I'm wrong. I don't know. But you know, there we've got a big situation with insurance insurance rates for apartments and houses, everything are, are really, really going up. And that concerns me uh, all over the country, actually. Yeah. So um, the, the next question, well, you're going to enjoy Florida if you decide to live there. Oh, um, I know. The next question is, um, what is a limiting mindset that you, that you see real estate investors, like active real estate investors have? That is a good question because there's a lot of them. Um, I think that that it, it's too, it's too hard to raise money. Everybody focuses on I don't I can't afford it. I can't. Yeah. Raise, what if it crashes? What if it? But if you you know that's why you buy for cash flow, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it may crash. But what happens is if you buy for cash flow and it's cash flowing and it can afford a 20% hit in income before you, you know, and, and, and you've got, you raise enough reserves so you can withstand a, 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 a rough time patch, right? You got to plan for these things. It doesn't really matter because in 2008 people couldn't buy houses. And so they rented. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. you gotta, uh, you know, we were we focused on class B plus stuff that aren't a real heavy lift, but are working Americans, cops and firemen and LVNs at the hospital and steel in Louisville is right outside the right next adjacent to the medical center. There are a lot of residents, 
that live there, you know, and nurses at the hospital and, 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 you know, it's, 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 um, you got to look at jobs all around with a, yeah. So it's, it's, it's more about, um, the buying for cash flow part that, that makes it, makes it attractive. And I don't worry about capital appreciate. I, I worry about capital preservation. Okay. I mean, I don't want to lose money. That's the very first thing. And, and if you do it right, right. So you'll get income, but you don't have to touch your capital. Whereas in the stock market, you have to sell the asset to get the money and then it's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you For know? Sure. And that, and I didn't, I didn't even, that light bulb didn't go off till later either. I'm so excited. You, you are making me um, want to plan like a reflection section set session because because I actually I started my entrepreneurial career selling insurance and I actually have my insurance uh, license, but I yep. really I really haven't haven't like digged deep into into that whole like be your own bank or use All your insurance that. to like you know I haven't I haven't really studied that. Well, I, I have know my about insurance it. License. So you just let me know. <laughs> yeah. So um. So so like my journey, just like yours, right? It's been unfolding for this moment for what I'm doing right now. Of course, like it's pretty cool, right? Um, so it's awesome. So you, you, you're making me want to just get a few hours and just reflect and then plan what I'm going to be doing next. So thank you for that. Hi. Um, and the last question, Holly is, um, what is success? What is the successful strategy or advice, some successful advice that you can give, you know, going back on the topic of raising capital? I think be authentic and never, ever tell a lie. You know, who so, was it? Okay. George Washington that cut down or Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Somebody cut down the cherry tree and lied about it. They may never tell a lie. Once you, all you have is your integrity. Yeah. You know, that's all you have. And, and once you, once you start doing, doing things that aren't really good, then you, then you, uh, it's hard to get that back. That's why I don't understand why we keep voting for all these politicians that are all lying. To <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. I wouldn't, we wouldn't be friends with them. They. We, Who do you go for? Right. Who do you and, go and for when all, everyone's lying? I mean, they're, they're just lying. And so we need to stop this. Not, I mean, I, I don't get it. So. But the way they talk makes it seem like really real. Like, <laughs> like if you listen to them, you, you like, you 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 believe you believe what they say. Well, very few of them have. I mean, I think we should just get rid of the ones that have been caught lying. And it's yeah, they want us sure. to think it's a Republican Democrat and all this stuff. It's not. It's really lying versus not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Who's lying? Who's not lying? <laughs> yeah, and that's what it uh, it all comes down to. So, um, Holly. Um. So basically, be authentic. Be authentic. Be yourself. Um, don't sell lies because it all comes down to, like we said earlier, right? Building relationships. So if you're building relationships, selling people what you do and you're being authentic and you're being real about everything that you do, then, you know, you'll be, um, you'll be sowing, right? So that later right. you can reap. Yes. And, you know, I write, the first thing I write about in, in my book is about, uh, victimhood, Right. And they, today, everybody wants to be a victim of oh, so-and-so smarter, so-and-so richer, so-and-so, you know, they started with their family money and all this stuff, but everybody has assets. Life isn't fair. It really isn't. And, but you're born with assets. Every one of us has unique things that are, whether it's our, where we come from or the languages we speak or the, uh, you know, whatever it is, you've got assets. And so the whole, the whole thing is to identify what you're good at. And I never yeah. realized that till for, till I was 50 years old. And so the, the sooner you can realize like what really makes you happy and what, what, what you're really good at, uh, this, the better off you are. And, and, and I've been much better off when I stick to my lane and what I, what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can either whine about the cards that you've been dealt or you can either, or you can use those cards to build a life you want. Right. That's right. Because one, once you're a victim, you can never be a, 
not be a victim. Somebody asked me, because, you know, I'm, there aren't that many women, relatively speaking, in real estate. How do you feel, you know, during the, the, the Me Too movement, this, they were doing, somebody was doing an article and called me, how do you feel about, or isn't it infuriating that there aren't more, what should people do to get more women in real estate? Like, we're going to legislate something like, okay, I'm not going to invest with you unless you have so many women on your <laughs> You know, it's ridiculous. And and all that is just a noise, right? I, I told him, I said, well, I love it because the restroom line is short at these conferences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I walk past yeah. the guys that are all standing in line. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's a that's a nice perk, right? But yeah, I mean, so life isn't fair. We're all different, and you should use your assets that God gave you, and uh, and use them for good things. Because once you're a awesome. victim, you're never not a victim. All you can do is walk around mad, and women women are disenfranchised, and you know, it just it just doesn't do any good. And then kick ass and take names and. If the jerks don't want to work with you, then let them go work somewhere else. It's, all, it's okay. <laughs> awesome. So how? You, right. Um. Yeah. Definitely. One hundred percent. Um. So the people that listen to this podcast are, you know, real estate investors or aspiring real estate investors. You know, some of them invest active, some invest mm -hmm. passive, and others don't know, right? Right. But every single person who listens to this podcast has chosen to use real estate as their wealth mm -hmm. creation vehicle. So, um, are there any last things? Uh, any last message or advice that you want that you might want to give them? I think that land ownership since the beginning of the Western civilization has been the measure of wealth. Mm -hmm. Real estate and gold have always been it is a universal truth that land and real estate is the measure of wealth. In the medieval times, the landowners voted. You own land, royalty owned land, you know? And so, so that's why I so believe that real estate is just um, a, a great thing to be in, but you should be in all of it. You know, you should, you should be in some other stuff too. Cause they, everything's cyclical, right? Yeah. Okay. So awesome. but real estate sure has made a difference in my life and, and many others. I mean, most of the really, really wealthy people make, are in real estate. Mm -hmm. So get in real estate. Awesome. So Holly, um, if we want to connect with you, there's some people that you know want to connect with you. Well, maybe they want to see what deals you got going on. Um, they want to take a look at your podcast, mm -hmm. at your book, and everything that you got going on. Where would be the best place for them to find you and connect with you? Probably keepmore.com. Okay, keepmore.com. We'll make sure to have um that link uh, wherever this appears. It's going to appear everywhere on reels and clips and everything so it's going to be pretty cool and um i'll also put the link to a training that you have and hidden then investing the is, yeah. is the mm -hmm. book name so i i've got both of those websites so and they all awesome. kind of link to each other so cool so um well thanks holly it's been great to it's get to meet great. you I'm and i'm glad um, we did this this was a yeah, lot of fun me too i enjoyed it all right so uh thank you very much and i'll see you later you bet bye Thank you for listening to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. We want you to know that we love and appreciate you and we are super grateful about being part of your journey of becoming a successful real estate entrepreneur and having it all. Please share this episode with a friend who you think will be impacted positively. Send it to someone who you know is interested in real estate and dreams of having it all and being the best they can be across all areas. And if you thought this episode was really valuable, share it on your social media as a post or a story. We have a special gift for all of those who contribute to the modern kings and queens movement. So for those of you who decided to share this episode and help us spread our message, send me a message letting me know on any social media platform at Alex Ramirez, the modern king. I have a special surprise for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.